Hello and welcome to the National Black MBA Association's Wednesday's webinar series. Thank you for joining us. Before we get things started, I'd like to take a moment or two to acquaint you with a few features of this web event technology. At any time during the seminar, you may adjust your audio using any computer volume settings you may have. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a Q&A window to submit your question. Please type your question in the small text box, and when finished, click the Send button. You may do this at any time during the program. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker, Danny Young. Danny has worked in higher education for 12 years as the current Director of Recruiting at the Consortium for Graduate Study in Management. Danny is tasked with managing the organization's efforts to connect and recruit prospective MBA students who embody the consortium's mission. She's been instrumental in developing a targeted recruiting schedule, streamlining system processes, and implementing new initiatives to increase the consortium's applicant pool. Danny also works very closely with the consortium's 19 member schools. Since Danny has joined the consortium, the organization has seen the highest attendance numbers at recruiting events, and the largest enrolled class in its 51-year history. Welcome to the seminar, Danny. The audience is all yours now. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that wonderful introduction. So good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on today's webinar titled, Make Your Career Move with the Consortium. On behalf of the National Black MBA Association and the consortium, we certainly appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your day for this webinar. As Don mentioned, my name is Danny Young, and I'll be your presenter for the duration of this webinar, and I serve as the Director of Recruiting for the consortium. During this webinar, you'll have an opportunity to learn about the National Black MBA Association and the consortium's partnership, reasons why you might want to consider an MBA, and learn about the consortium's application process and fellowship opportunities. At the end, you will have an opportunity to submit your questions via the chat box. Let's get started, shall we? We've been a longtime partner, supporter, and advocate of the National Black MBA Association for many years, and they've been one of our biggest supporters as well. Our alliance is strong because our mission and core values regarding diversity and inclusion align. Many of our applicants, current students, and alumni are members of the National Black MBA Association. If you haven't, we strongly encourage you to join the National Black MBA Association to take advantage of the many resources and opportunities that membership affords. As many of you may know, the National Black MBA Association hosts one of the largest conferences that serve minority professionals each year. This is one of the conferences that consortium staff current students, and our alums look forward to attending every year because of the programming and networking opportunities. We typically will have a booth and host the information session at the conference. You can certainly count on us being at the next conference in Detroit in September. So for those of you that are not as familiar with the consortium, I wanted to give you a brief insight into our history. The consortium was created by, professor, by a professor at Washington University in St. Louis, Sterling Shane. Professor Shane wanted to give African-American men the business skills they needed to secure positions in American corporations. Our mission is to enhance diversity in business education and leadership by reducing the serious underrepresentation of African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Native Americans in our member schools enrollment and in the ranks of management. We realized this mission by recruiting outstanding students from all ethnicities who embody our mission and connect them with top tier MBA programs and our corporate partners. Since our inception, we've built a 52 year legacy of fostering inclusion and changing the ethnic and cultural face of American business. We've offered $360 million in fellowship support to aspiring MBAs since 1966. Last year alone, we offered 413 fellowships to candidates across our member schools. Sounds exciting, right? So we'll talk more about the consortium's alliances and how we can benefit prospective MBA candidates. But first, I wanted to talk about some of the major reasons for pursuing the MBA. 
for those that are not quite sure if the MBA is right for you. We've identified four major reasons to pursue an MBA. First, an MBA can help you develop business knowledge, skills, and abilities. Having an MBA is a game changer. An MBA will provide you with exposure to business-related topics and areas such as economics, finance, marketing, operations, management, and accounting. You'll also develop soft skills that are critical to effective management, such as leadership, teamwork, ethics, and communication. An MBA can essentially teach you how to manage people. The second reason for pursuing an MBA is access to a broader network. This network would consist of fellow classmates, alumni, faculty, business, and community leaders. And as you probably already know, having a strong network can open so many doors. The third reason for pursuing an MBA is an MBA offers flexibility across the life of your career. Think of the MBA as a brand. And you obviously know that how important branding is in the business world. An MBA can help you stand out in your career. It can boost your credibility in and outside the workplace. And finally, the MBA gives you increased job opportunity. So if you want to pursue expertise outside your current field, the MBA will certainly provide you with the education to do so. Many folks are looking to change careers as well, and an MBA can help with that transition. So if you are seriously considering an MBA at this point, it's important that you establish a timeline. Pursuing, pursuing an MBA is a journey. So first, you want to start by planning to take the GMAT or GRE. Taking either test is one of the requirements when applying to business school. Next, it would be in your best interest to research the MBA programs and the schools you're interested in. Make sure you understand the difference between the type of MBA programs that are out there, such as the part-time MBA program, the full-time, and the executive MBA programs. In addition to researching those schools, be sure to visit the campuses as well. Stepping foot on campus will give you the chance to see if the environment, campus, and location is a good fit for you. Finally, you need to plan ahead and establish how you intend to pay for your MBA. It's certainly an investment, but it can be very costly. With that being said, I wanted to share with you more about the consortium's application process and the fellowship opportunity as a possible resource to help cover your tuition costs. So, as we talked about earlier, the consortium is an alliance of 19 top-tier MBA programs we have about 75 corporate partners, more than 9,000 alumni in the U.S. and abroad, and roughly 950 current students across our member schools. As I mentioned, we have 19 schools that are part of the consortium. On this slide, you'll see a list of our member schools, all of which have nationally ranked MBA programs and are committed to increasing diversity in their MBA programs. The most recent school to join the consortium is Rice University. Please note that only the two-year full-time MBA programs at our member schools are a part of the consortium, with the exception of Emory. Emory's one-year program is also a part of the consortium as well. I also wanted to mention that the executive MBA programs and the part-time programs are not a part of the consortium, only the full-time two-year MBA programs. So at this point, you are probably wondering who can apply to the consortium. Our application is not exclusive to African Americans, Hispanic Americans, or Native Americans. In fact, it's open to any U.S. citizen or permanent resident that can demonstrate a commitment to our mission. And we'll talk more about that demonstrating commitment to our mission later in the presentation. Additionally, applicants must have a bachelor's degree from an accredited institution. And just to give you a quick snapshot of our previous recruiting cycle, 
Last year, we received roughly 1,179 applications. Of that number, 741 applicants were admitted to at least one school they applied to. And of that pool of admitted candidates, our schools offered 413 consortium fellowships last year. Our current recruiting cycle is underway, and we roughly have 1,140 applications so far for those pursuing business school in the fall of 2018. So that's a quick snapshot of our past recruiting cycle and where we currently stand now. So what does consortium membership mean? Membership in the consortium is lifelong. Our exclusive network consists of our 19 schools that we talked about, our alumni, our current students, and our corporate partners. Membership also means that you'll have a chance um, if you're offered membership to be considered for the consortium fellowship. And the fellowship is merit-based and it covers the entire tuition of the MBA program and any other required fees. It's essentially a full ride. We'll talk more in detail about the fellowship later in the presentation. Membership also means that consortium members will have access to CGSM Online. And this is an online career center in which our corporate partners have access to. Students can upload their resumes, learn more about job postings through CGSM Online. And our corporate partners also have access to it as well. Additionally, consortium membership means every consortium member will have a chance to attend our orientation program and career forum, or as we call it, OP. OP is one of the exciting highlights of the consortium experience. It's a five-day conference for new consortium members, which allows students premier access to our corporate partners. Students attend workshops and presentations focus on business, and truly get a jump start on their career opportunities even before they start their MBA program. OP is also a chance for new consortium members to make lifelong connections with students from our member schools. It's also a great way to kick off your journey as you prepare for your MBA. And the conference is pretty much covered by the consortium. This year, OP will be in Orlando, Florida, June 9th through the 13th. I also wanted to mention that OP is mandatory for any new consortium members. So hopefully at this point, you're even more excited about possibly becoming a consortium member. So now that we've discussed membership, let's talk about the benefits of the consortium application. As you know, the MBA application process is highly competitive. Our common application will you allow you to apply for admission, be considered for a membership, and the fellowship all at once. It allows you to streamline the application process. So all of your application materials, such as transcripts, test scores, and recommendations would come to the consortium and then be released to the schools. The second benefit of our application is the tiered application fee structure, which allows you the option to apply up to six schools with our common application. And if you've started researching schools, you probably know already that the application fees can be very costly. Our structure will cut some of those costs and not only save you time, but money as well. And the third benefit of applying to business schools through the consortium is if you're offered membership, you'll be considered for the consortium fellowship as well. Again, it's essentially a full ride for any new consortium members if you're granted the fellowship. It's important to note that not every consortium member is offered a fellowship. So if you are figuring out how to pay for business school, make sure you look at other options such as financial aid or your savings as well. And so now that we've discussed the benefits of being a member and benefits of the application, I wanted to quickly discuss the consortium application components for those that are not familiar with our application process. So there are essentially seven components to the consortium application. 
Let's first start with our core application. So the core application is made up of general admissions questions and general essays. Within the core, you'll find the consortium membership essay, and this is your chance to write a compelling essay to provide us with particular examples of how you've been a champion for diversity as it relates to our mission. The next component is our school supplement section of the application. And this will determine um, how many schools you choose to apply to will determine how many supplements you'll need to complete. So for example, if you choose to apply to six schools, you'll have six supplements to complete. And keep in mind that only those schools will see their particular supplement. Next are the transcripts. So we will require undergraduate and post-undergraduate transcripts from all the institutions you receive credit from. And you would just upload a scanned copy to your application. The next component is the resume. So we will need your most current resume uploaded to the application. The fifth component is the GBAT or GRE score requirement. So once you take the GMAT or GRE, it's important that you list the consortium to receive your official score report. So our codes can be found on our website under the GMAT and GRE section, but keep in mind that you should list the consortium um, as the recipient for your official score report. You would not need to request that the other schools receive it, only the consortium. And so once we would have your official GMAT and GRE score report, we then will release it to all the schools that you applied to. Next are the recommendations. So we require a total of three recommendations. Two of them are professional recommendations that are only seen by the schools. And the third recommendation is the membership recommendation, which is only seen by the consortium. And the membership recommendation is an opportunity for you to select someone that can attest to your commitment to our mission. And the great thing about our recommendation requirement is that you only need to input your contact, uh, your recommender's contact information in our application. They will actually receive a link to complete the form electronically. So you won't need to actually ask them to write a letter of recommendation for you. You would just need to input their contact information. It's a very streamlined process. And finally, we will require the application fee. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a tiered application fee structure. And depending on how many schools you choose to apply to will determine your application fee. And that application fee will be required at the time of submission of your application. So these are all of the components of the consortium application, and they will be required um, to submit your application. So I wanted to take a minute and talk more about the membership essay requirement found in our core application. This is an opportunity for the applicant to address what have you done to impact African Americans, Hispanic Americans, or Native Americans as it relates to our mission? We want you to be very specific. We want you to provide examples. Um, and being an active member of the National Black MBA Association is actually a really great example that um, you can include in your essay if you are part of the National Black MBA. And right above on the slide in front of you, you can see that we provide an example of what we're looking for when we're asking you to provide examples of how you've been committed to our mission. So the key is to be very thorough when you're providing your examples. The examples that you include will likely make or break your chance of being approved for consortium membership. So I would encourage you to structure your essay by talking about what have you done pre-MBA in your professional, academic, or personal life as it relates to our mission. The second paragraph, I would encourage you to focus on what you will do while you're enrolled in your MBA program to demonstrate your commitment to our mission. And the third paragraph, we would encourage you to talk, to talk about what will you do post-MBA in respect to community service and leadership to continue being an advocate for the consortium. Remember, with this essay, 
you must write a compelling essay to be granted consortium membership. And without consortium membership, you can't even be considered for the consortium fellowship. So writing a general or vague essay will not help your chances of being granted membership. So I wanted to make sure I emphasize some key points about consortium membership. The first being, you must be admitted to at least one of the consortium schools you apply to. So if you choose to apply to six schools with an application, you must be granted admission into at least one of the schools to be considered for consortium membership. The second key point is who decides consortium membership. And consortium membership is decided by the consortium and the consortium only. The third key point about membership is how is membership decided? And we've briefly touched on this, but I'll reiterate it. Membership is decided by the membership essay, the mission recommendation, and the resume. Those three components will help us decide if we want to extend you membership or not. And the fourth point about membership is, the question is, what are the expectations of a consortium member? Are there membership dues? So our expectations are that you are committed to uplifting our mission and that you are expected to serve as an advocate for the consortium during the MBA program and beyond. There are no dues associated with consortium membership. So we've outlined key points about membership, so it's only right that we outline key points about the fellowship. So the first point is, who awards the consortium fellowship? How are they awarded? So the consortium fellowships are awarded by our member schools. They are merit-based fellowships based on your academic track record. In the application, you are asked to rank your schools. The rankings are only used to decide the order in which schools can award you the consortium fellowship. So for example, if you choose to apply to six schools, your first ranked school has the opportunity to award you the consortium fellowship. Should they choose not to, the opportunity to award you the consortium fellowship goes to your second ranked school, so on and so forth. The second point about the fellowship is what does it cover? And we've touched on this as well, but the consortium fellowship is basically a full ride and any other required fees uh, particular to that school. The third part is how many consortium fellowship offers can I receive? And the answer is you can only receive one consortium fellowship. So only one consortium school can offer you the consortium fellowship. But keep in mind that if you're not offered a fellowship, you still can be a member of the consortium. The fourth point about fellowship is can I transfer the consortium fellowship? And the answer is no. So for example, if one of the schools offers you the consortium fellowship, but you decide to not accept that fellowship offer, and you decide to attend another consortium school, you will not be able to transfer that consortium fellowship to the school that you want to go to. So I just wanted to be very clear about that. So those are four key points about the consortium fellowship. So at this time, our online application portal is closed, but it will reopen in mid-August for those that are wanting to start their MBA in fall of 2019. Now if you're still thinking about fall of 2018, you can consider going through our school referred application process. The school referred application process requires that you apply directly to our member schools, and if you're offered admission, the school can then refer your name to us, and then you would be considered for a consortium membership and possibly the fellowship. The school referral process ends at the end of April, so if you're still thinking about fall 2018, at this point you will need to apply directly to the school. And again, if you're offered admission, let that admissions contact person know that you're interested in a consortium membership, and they would need to refer your name to us. In general, if you are wanting to start school in fall 2019, you'll notice on the slide are two application deadlines. 
We have an early deadline and a traditional deadline. You can apply in either, either the early deadline or the traditional deadline, but you can't apply in both. Overall, the key is submitting the strongest application possible. So please note that we receive 80% of our applications in the traditional deadline. But if you feel that you're ready, by all means apply in the early deadline. The advantage of applying in the first or the early deadline is that you've, you'll hear about admissions from the schools earlier and you could be awarded a fellowship, uh, but for the most part, most applicants will hear about the fellowship in mid-March. So these are our two application deadlines. You'll also see listed the suggested dates to take the GMAT and GRE by. Those are just suggested dates. They're not firm deadlines, but we suggest those dates to allow time for us to receive your official school report before the deadline. And as mentioned earlier, our application will reopen in mid-August if you're considering fall 2019. So we've covered a lot during this webinar and I truly appreciate your participation. I wanted to also mention that the consortium host MBA application seminars are better known as MAPS events nationwide in the fall for prospective MBA candidates that want to learn more about the application process, connect with our school reps, and our alumni. If you are interested in attending one of our MAPS events, please visit our website and complete our interest page to stay in the loop with us. Also, if you want to become a member of the National Black MBA Association, please refer to the link listed on the slide. At this time, we'll open it up to questions. All right. Thank you, Ms. Young, for the excellent presentation. As a reminder for our audience, Q&A is located on the right-hand side of your screen. In order to send us a question, please type your question in the small text box at the bottom, and when finished, click the Send button or press Enter. And at this time, Ms. Young, I'll defer to you for questions we receive from our audience. Thank you, Don. So the first question I see um, states or asks, can you be a part of the consortium while you're doing your executive MBA or part-time program? And the answer is, unfortunately, no. The consortium is only for the full-time two-year MBA programs at our member schools. So the executive and the part-time programs are excluded. The next question, it's a similar question, can you join the consortium post-MBA? And the answer is no. Uh, the consortium at this point is only for prospective MBA candidates who are going to start an MBA program. So you can't join it as of right now as a first-year student or second-year student. It's only for uh, new students about to start the MBA program. Here's a great question. Um, this person is asking, where can I find the list of participating member schools? And you can find the list of our member schools on our website at www.cgsm.org. And under our member schools tab, you'll see the list of our 19 member schools. And you'll also find links to their pages on their website outlining their MBA program. I also wanted to add that on each of our schools page, we list the consortium contacts as well for each of the schools. And if you wanted to take it a step further and connect with our student liaisons, we have two student liaisons at each of our schools, and their email address is also located on our website on their page. So our, our schools are listed on our website under the Member Schools tab. Let's see, great questions coming in. Thank you, everyone. So this question is, can you explain the school supplement component of the application in more detail? So with our consortium application, there's the core part of the application. And the core part is made up of admissions questions and general essays. And that will be seen by all the schools you plan to apply to. 
So for instance, if you plan to apply to six schools, all six schools will see the questions on your core part of the application. With the same example, if you choose to apply to six schools, you'll have six different supplements complete. And the supplement is an opportunity for the schools to ask their particular questions for the applicant. And so only that school will see their individual supplement. And so the supplement is made up of essays that the schools have listed within their supplement. Great question. A lot of great questions. Um, I see a question about, is there a GPA requirement for membership? And the answer is no. So anyone can apply. There's not a certain GPA you need to apply. Um, but just keep in mind that when schools receive your application, you know, they will look at your academic track record, but there is no certain GPA that you must have to submit an application. No certain GPA or test score requirement to submit an application. This question is, where can I find a list of financial aid opportunities for those enrolling in executive MBA programs? Um, this is a question that you probably want to direct toward the schools that you're interested in applying to. So um, feel free to reach out to the schools directly regarding that question. Um, so this question is, if you apply for the early deadline and are not accepted, can you be deferred or reconsidered with the traditional deadline applicant pool? And the answer is no. So you can only apply in one recruiting cycle. So if you ch choose to apply in the early application deadline, you cannot then apply in the second deadline. Only one application per recruiting cycle. So either the early deadline or the traditional, but not both. Okay, a lot of great questions. Just trying to make sure that I don't uh, answer the same questions. Let's see, if you've already obtained an MBA in another field, can you still apply if I'm interested in taking another MBA? Um, this question is probably more so for the schools. If you have an MBA already, um, I'm not sure if it's to your advantage to apply through us, but that would be a question I would direct towards the school. Um, I see a question that asks, can I be a member of Forte and the Consortium? And the answer is yes. Many of our applicants are also Forte members as well. So you can be a member of Forte, MLT, National Black MBA. You can be a member of other organizations as well, in addition to becoming a consortium member. I see a question about if I'm interested in fall of 2018 enrollment, has the deadline to take the GMAT or GRE passed? Great question. So our portal is closed, but as I mentioned in the presentation, you can apply directly to the schools at this point if you're wanting to start in the fall of 2018. And whatever those school requirements are, which all the schools require the GMAT and GRE, you would just adhere to their instructions. So if you have not scheduled the GMAT and GRE, I would encourage you to do so quickly, but first reach out to the schools and find out how late is too late to take the GMAT and GRE. Okay. Keep your questions coming, guys. Really great questions. I'm going to get through as many of them as I can. So one question is also, are there plans to add HBCUs to the member schools? So at this time, we currently have 19 member schools, and uh, Right now, they are our member schools. So if should we add any additional schools, we will let um, our constituents know. But right now, we have our 19 schools, and the latest school that we've added is Rice University. But we actually are working 
um, on an HBCU initiative to attract more applicants to have graduated from HBCUs because, as you know, um, as a graduate myself from the HBCU, they're some of the best and brightest out there. So if you know of anyone or if you're actually an HBCU graduate thinking about an MBA, you should definitely consider applying through the consortium. Uh, I see a question about will we be able to review this later? Um, Don, I'm not sure if we can share this presentation. I'm, I'm okay with sharing it, but I'm happy to. Uh, there may be a recording later for this presentation that will be able to be shared. Yes, recorders are rolling, Danny. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Is there a way we can see previous application questions, supplemental essay questions? And the answer is yes. So in the summertime, um, we will post, as we're updating our application, we will post uh, supplemental questions to our website so you can see the past questions. Um, so you'll be able to see that in the summertime before the application reopens. But we will be updating our application now that it's closed. And in the summertime, you'll be able to see past supplemental questions from our schools. But keep in mind that once the application is open, you would make sure you adhere to those questions within the online application and not the ones that are posted on the website. Okay, great questions. Um, so do you typically see applicants visit prospective campuses before or after they've applied? So we see a bit of both. We've seen folks visit campuses before they've applied and then after. And so my advice is to visit the campus as soon as possible. Um, and do so before you submit your application. Um, a lot of our schools have diversity weekends, so I would highly encourage you to try to participate in those diversity weekends if you can. But yes, we've seen applicants uh, visit campuses before they submit and after. And so the key thing about that is, you know, as you're ranking your schools, you really want to be certain that you've had a chance to visit your number one ranked school, and you want to be certain that it's the school that you actually want to attend. So highly encourage you to visit the campus before you actually submit your application, because once you submit your application, you cannot adjust or change your rankings of the schools. Okay, this is a really great question I wanted to make sure we address. Is there an interview required through consortium or any other member schools. For example, if the regular application of a university requires an interview, does the consortium membership void that? So I'm going to start with the first part of this question. Is there an interview required through consortium? The consortium does not conduct an interview, but you know schools will conduct their own interviews. So once we forward your application to schools, most of the schools conduct interviews, so they will set that up with you directly. But the consortium itself, we do not conduct interviews. Um, and I think this the second part of this question deals with, if you are offered admission into a school, can you be denied consortium membership? So the answer is, yeah, you can gain admission to a school and still be denied membership. So. It's very critical that you write a compelling membership essay. Uh, but yeah, that has happened where an applicant has applied through us and they've been admitted to certain MBA programs, but they were denied consortium membership. And so in that case, obviously your admission decisions will still stand. You just won't be able to be a part of the consortium. Okay. Um, I'm going to take probably one or two more questions, and I'm trying to find a question that's not redundant, so bear with me for a second. Okay. 
this question is, does the consortium have a relationship with UCLA's Reardon MBA Fellowship? And the answer is yes. Uh, we've, for many years, attended the DMAC conference, and, um, you know, folks who are Reardon Fellows, that's a great example um, to to, ab to talk about in your membership essay. So we're very familiar with uh, the Reardon program, and we've uh, actually been uh, one of the sponsors for several years at the DMAC conference. Okay. There, there's a question about age requirement. So there is no age requirement with the consortium application. So there's, you don't have to be a certain age to apply through us. Okay, so Don, it looks like a lot of the other questions are repetitive. So I just wanted to um, close out the, the question part and, and thank everyone for providing their questions. And um, feel free to send us an email directly at www or at recruiting at cjsm.org. It's listed on this last slide. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us directly or give us a call. Uh, we're happy to answer uh, more questions for you as they come up. On behalf of the National Black MBA Association, we would like to thank you for your participation as an attendee and also thank our presenter for a great program. This concludes today's program. Thank you, and have a nice day.